A very big request that Jason and I received for many, many months was adding the possibility for users to create their own custom platforms, but still be able to scrape and download all of the metadata that the Launchbox Games database and Emu Movies has to offer, and the feature now exists. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to use the brand new, as of Launchbox 6.3, Scrape As feature. And what this will allow you to do is use and create custom platforms while still being able to scrape metadata for the, let's call it, parent system accurately. So over in LaunchBox, you'll see here that I have a system called SNES parentheses MSU dash one close parentheses. Now, clearly that this is not a system that uh, exists. MSU one is a ROM hack and hack uh, system that allows users to put audio into the game in place of the existing audio but instead of just swapping out songs a la a rom hack uh, it allows users to insert cd quality audio into the game which can even be played on real hardware like uh, like an snes with an everdrive or it can be played on an emulator and you get this nicer sounding uh, audio, CD quality, um, or if you follow RSS, um, someone redid the BS Legend of Zelda, the remake uh, from the Satellaview. That game originally had voice acting in it that was broadcast along with the game, which we thought was lost to time, and somebody translated that uh, audio from Japanese to English, redubbed it and inserted it using MSU-1. So it's also preserving even uh, history and, and gaming culture that we thought was just lost to the world. So MSU-1 is really handy. So uh, what if you don't want to insert all your MSU-1 games into your Super Nintendo Entertainment System platform? on LaunchBox. Say you're like me and you want to import your games. I just imported these games about five minutes ago, but we would go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. We'll click Add Files. We will navigate to where we have our MSU-1 SNES games. Now in here are SF, uh, SFC files. So we're going to use the Windows search function like I've shown you how to do. We're going to do asterisk dot SFC. All of the games are going to pop up uh, in each subfolder. We're going to control A to highlight them all. And then we're going to click open. We're going to click next. And right here where it says platform for imported ROMs. Now, normally, if you choose a default platform name like Super Nintendo Entertainment System here, you click it and uh, nothing shows up here. You just keep continuing on. Uh, like nothing were to happen. But for our purposes, we want to change it to the SNES MSU-1. Once you've changed the platform name to something not on the default list, the scrape as function will automatically show up. Now, normally, if you're just adding this, this would just be blank. Scrape as would pop up. Then from the dropdown, you would select one of the default platforms like Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So now we've got our platform named SNES parentheses MSU dash one M parentheses. And we are scraping that as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So you would go through this like you would any other uh, platform so you'll choose your emulator or if you are going to use uh, a specific emulator like RetroArch make sure you go into the associated platforms and add your special uh, associated platform name because uh, it's not going to use the scrape as name it's going to use your custom platform name all of your images and your media and all the associated platform default command line parameters have to route through the name you give it 
and not the scrape as name. Otherwise, that would be kind of broken. So make sure to add your special platform to your associated platforms list in something like RetroArch or MAME or MESS or whatever you're going to try and use. So in this case, I added the SNES MSU-1. And for now, I just copied the BeastNest Balanced Lib Retro line. Um, I don't know if this is actually going to work. I haven't tested my MSU-1 games. Um, so this is not a uh, MSU-1 tutorial. Though, actually, that might be a good thing to do in the future. This is just showing you how to use Scrape As. So once you have everything set up as you like, go ahead and click OK. And then next, we're going to use the files in their current location. We are going to just scrape the LaunchBox Games database. We're going to keep all of the uh, categories selected here. And then on the uh, Emu Movies login page, we're just going to keep everything at default. The next. And in this case, the ROM files are not named properly, but the folders are. So I'm going to go ahead and check the box to use folder names instead of the ROM file names for game titles. And then you're going to click next. Everything is going to parse. And if you have duplicates in here, so for example, I've got two versions of the ROM, one for emulators and one for presumably real hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I delete the one that doesn't say emulator in it. Now, some of these don't have alternate versions. A good example would be the BSF0 Grand Prix 2. They're in two separate folders instead of having two separate uh, ROM files. So in this case, I would I would just keep both of them. When your import list looks good, good and ready, go ahead and click finish. And then it's going to run through the importer like normal. But as you've noticed, it's going to go ahead and download all of the SNES uh, regular uh, scrapable names and all that good stuff. So, for example, if I were to click a little Zelda... There we go. We get the music that LaunchBox downloaded. So all of the relevant media still gets downloaded like normal. But what if you added a platform to LaunchBox before Scrape As was a thing? Or maybe you prefer to add your systems to LaunchBox uh, in the add platforms section of LaunchBox. So let's take the MSX2 translated custom platform that I've created. Now, obviously it's not called the MSX2 translated, but I wanted all my MSX2 uh, English tr fan translated games separated from my regular just Japanese MSX2 or European MSX2 games. So let's go to tools, manage platforms, we're going to scroll down to our custom platform, which would be the MSX2 translated. We're going to double click it. In the edit platform window for the MSX2 translated system, right below the title is a scrape as line. It should again default to blank, but go ahead and select the appropriate uh, default platform that you would be using. So in my case, it would be the MSX. Once you do that though, however, you will need to download some metadata. So you'll notice that all my games are blank. Now, most of these games may not have an entry in the database or on Emu movies, and that's just the nature of older PC uh, platforms. But uh, let's go ahead and download what we can. So you're gonna click on a game, you're gonna press Control A to highlight them all. Then you're gonna go to Tools, Download Metadata and Images. Now, this is going to act like the ROM importer, but instead of importing ROMs and then downloading media, it's just going to download media and not import anything. So we're going to click next, download from the LaunchBox Games database, next, next, and then for Emo Movies, we're going to leave everything checked. And then uh, in this window here, since I don't have any metadata or media downloaded for these games, realistically, any three of these fields should work. Uh, I'll go into a, to another tutorial at a later date for how to update your system's metadata after you've already done an initial ROM import or something like that. But for now, we're just gonna go, yes, download and replace all existing metadata because it's mostly empty. It, for the most part, shouldn't matter which option we check, but I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I check that top option uh, for the best possible 
uh, amount of media and metadata that it can grab. And a few minutes later, there is metadata downloaded for my custom platform. Now, again, obviously there's not metadata for every game, but there is metadata certainly for quite a few games. And with the image priorities feature that I taught last week on the LaunchBox tutorials, uh, there's even more images now. So this wouldn't be here without image priorities because uh, I have my image priorities set up to also use screenshots if the game doesn't have a front box art. So that will help make your system look a little bit more pretty or at least have less holes uh, in your library. So that's it. That's how you use the scrape as feature during, uh, importing your games into LaunchBox, or if you already have the system added to LaunchBox, or you like to add systems first and then import, uh, games afterwards into those systems. Uh, those are the two ways that you can do it. My name is Brad. If you liked this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more videos in the future. If I covered, um, if I didn't cover anything in this tutorial as adequately as you would have liked me to, then please, please, please leave your questions in the comment section below. Jason and myself are more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have on LaunchBox or even emulators, or if you need help with something in your computer, we're more than happy to answer any of these questions for you guys. If you like the sound of my voice, the link to my channel will be in the description below. I do lots of gaming content. I also stream over on Twitch, uh, and then that stuff usually goes up to YouTube afterwards. I do Let's Plays and retrospectives, and I'm getting into reviews, and so if that sounds like your cup of tea, my link is in the description below. Subscribe to me if you like my video videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys showed me some love over there. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!